Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. It's a sunny Saturday with above average temperatures all across Metro Detroit. And the unseasonable warm temperatures are set to continue throughout the weekend as well. Brian Sherman joins us from the weather patio with more on the forecast. Brian, perfect day today. Yeah, that's right, Sandra. We couldn't ask for better fall weather across all of southeastern Michigan. It has been a beautiful day, and this weather is going to continue not only for the rest of the evening hours tonight, but into the weekend and early next week as well. A beautiful shot on tower cam overlooking Windsor across the river into downtown Detroit. Temperatures have really responded in kind today, warming well into the 70s for everyone heading into this afternoon. Last check, we were in the mid 70s here in downtown Detroit, lower 70s outside of the metro and temperatures because of the sunshine you're seeing on tower cam will drop pretty quickly as we head into the evening hours tonight. We will see the dry weather continue on if we can. There we go. We'll get the temperatures up here eventually. Temperatures for the most part still into the 70s across southeastern Michigan this evening. We will keep this warm weather around as we head throughout the rest of the day. I think I'm getting a lag in the computer. Either way we look at it, what you're seeing on tower cam is pretty much what's going to continue through the rest of the evening hours tonight. Temperatures dropping into the 60s this evening. We'll aim for the 50s overnight tonight, 70s for at least the next two to three days, but we do have some colder changes on the way. I've had to drop temperatures a few degrees heading into the end of the week. We'll talk about when the rain moves into the region and when those drop in temperatures occurs. That's a new complete full four and forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Sandra. All right, thank you, Brian. Now to a developing story from Oakland County. That's where a doctor is now facing sex abuse charges. We've learned the alleged victim in this case is a 19 year old boy. Jacqueline Francis joins us now live with more on what we're learning about the investigation. Jacqueline. Yeah, Dr. Zvi Lavron is being held here at the Oakland County Jail. He's a urologist from Farmington Hills. They're told that he's charged with four counts of criminal sexual conduct involving a 19 year old male and three counts of more counts of criminal sexual conduct to the fourth degree. We're told that the doctor provided medical assistance to youth hockey organizations in Michigan and Minnesota for the past 20 years. Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald releasing a statement this evening saying our number one goal is to keep our community safe and make sure victims feel safe coming forward. And that's why we ask if you have any information, please call the Farmington Hills Police Tip Line at 248-871-2610. As you said, this is a developing story and we'll bring you more as we learn it. Reporting live at the Oakland County Jail, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. All right, thank you, Jacqueline. Oakland County's first gun buyback program was a success. The multiple trade and locations ran out of gift cards within the first hour today. The goal of the pilot program is to get unwanted guns, of course, off the street. Our Megan Woods was in Royal Oak as people drove up to find out they weren't going to get what they weren't able to exchange their gift for a Visa gift card. Across the county, including here at Royal Oak Police Department, the gun buyback program was supposed to be from 10 to 2. But by the time we arrived here at 11, police told us they had already given out all of their gift cards. We had people as, here early as 5 a.m. This is a look at the long line outside of Royal Oak Police Department. Deputy Chief Patrick Stanton says the gun buyback is a simple process. Well, the way it works is uh, people come in line, they provide their identification just for logging purposes. Uh, they advise us what they have. We'll collect the weapons, make sure that they're safe, and then we will in turn provide them with gift cards for the corresponding weapon that they turn in. Royal Oak Police partnered with Berkeley Police, and in 52 minutes, those gift cards were gone. The cards were provided by the county. We ran out of them. Each department was issued $7,500 through the program, so combining with Berkeley, roughly $15,000. But that didn't stop people from wanting to get rid of their guns. Seven local law enforcement agencies in Oakland County participated. This woman first went to the gun buyback in Southfield and waited in line for 45 minutes. We found out that that was um, all done over there. So we came over here. I called the police to find out they were still accepting guns, even without the um, gift certificates and they said yes, so we just wanted to get the gun out of our house. She wasn't expecting everyone else to have the same plan. I'm surprised how quickly they ran out of uh, the, uh, the gift certificates and I'm 
grateful to know that so many guns are getting out of circulation now. Deputy Chief Stanton calls it a success. Uh, based on this event, I think there will be a lot of feedback as we talk as a group as to how today went, and we'll probably look forward to doing another one down the road. Before the weapons are completely destroyed by Michigan State Police, they do go through a special process. In Royal Oak, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Royal Oak Police, as well as other law enforcement agencies, accept those unwanted guns throughout the year. Police tonight investigating a deadly house fire in Inkster. It happened right around 1030 last night on Florence Street. A 17-year-old boy and a 15-year-old boy were both found dead inside that house. Police tell us the fire they do believe was accidental and they will continue to investigate. Now to the coronavirus, the head of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has tested positive for COVID-19. A statement from the CDC says Dr. Rochelle Walensky learned of her positive test on Friday night. She's experiencing mild symptoms and she's also isolating at home right now. The agency does say that Walensky is up to date on all of her vaccinations and received an updated booster just last month. New cases of RSV, a common cold-like virus, have hit the highest level for any single week in the past two years. New data from the CDC shows more than 7,300 cases of the virus in the U.S. last week. For most people, RSV typically just causes mild cold-like symptoms, which recovery is usually about a week or two from that. But the virus can be more serious in infants and older adults, as we've been telling you. Several children's hospitals say they have been overwhelmed with patients. Also, federal data shows pediatric beds are more full now than any time in the past two years. Still ahead here at six, help is now on hold. President Biden's plan to forgive billions of dollars placed on pause by the courts. Find out what we're learning about what's going to happen up next.